All right, so it's been like a month and a half. And during that month and a half period, I've had some revelation of God uh, speaking to me that, hey, you're doing a lot for me. You're, 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 you're working for me, but I need that intimacy. You know, I need you to stay close to me. I need you to pray more. I need you to be in your Bible more. All right, I need uh, that closeness. And, and I got the memo that my father was sending. All right, I got that memo. All right, so as, as, as such a thing, and it, sometimes I'm doing a lot, but sometimes I'm not doing as much, but I do do a fair amount of work uh, for, for, for the Lord. Now, uh, but as such a thing, when you can do so much work and do so much for God, you're so busy doing His work, but you're not being intimate. You're not praying. All right? you, you're not being close to Him. All right? you, you, you're not praying at all times. So you can be, you can do his work and be obedient, but still be far from God. So today we're going to talk about how staying close to God is important. Now, the first I'm going to talk about is have a consistent prayer life. All right, there's three points we're going to talk about. Have a consistent prayer life. Have a consistent Bible study. You got to get in that word. You have to know the word. And live a consecrated life. So live a consecrated life. Be sanctified. And all that is is just be separate. All right. Live a separate type of life. All right. You're in the kingdom of God now. You're saved. You got to you gotta separate yourself from the world. All right. And I'm not saying separate yourself from the world and go out there and, and be some type of monk or something like that. No, but you, you got to be in this world, but not necessarily of this world. You're a new creature, a creature now in Christ Jesus. All right, so let's get to some Bible verses. First one is having a consistent prayer life. And God was really talking to me this last, this last month and a half about praying more. Because when you pray, you, you have that closeness to God. You have that power. All right, you, you stand close to the fire, which means you're hot. That means when you're praying for other people and you're casting demonic forces out and you're healing sickness, it, 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 it happens quicker. All right, so I can't even, I won't even say quicker, you'll probably see more manifestations of it, all right? So a lot of you guys, you don't, you're not seeing these manifestations, either you're sick or, 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 or you see all kinds of things that happen in your life and things are not changing when you pray, you're probably not praying enough and, you, and you're probably not praying long enough. So you're probably not praying enough as far as quantity, you probably pray like once a week or twice a week, you may, you may need to pray a little bit more. And when you pray, it's probably like 30 or 40 seconds or like five minutes, you got to put more into it. All right. Sometimes you get what you get out. All right. You get out with what you put in. Not all the time, but sometimes based on what you put in, you get out and you praying for 10 minutes once a week. That's not much of a connection with, with God. All right. Maybe praying, praying 10 minutes every day and then you you uh, you pray for maybe 30 minutes or fast for like a couple of hours and spend time with God. Listen to worship music. Talk to him. Uh, uh, sit there and listen, get in your Bible, all right, listen to different sermons, build your faith, and you're doing that consistently, then, yeah, okay, then you have more of a closer relationship. You, you, push, you push deep into God, He's going to push deep into you. A lot of people say that, you know, God's not talking to me. Probably a, a major reason why you're not hearing from God and you're not hearing the miraculous is because you're not close to God. You're not praying. So I want you guys to pray more and something I had to do too, so busy. And, and, and with me, it was not just me doing God's work. It was me doing a lot of my, my job, me doing business, me just putting everything in front of God in the, in the um, God is the most important thing in our lives. God must come first. All right. And so it's me just doing everything else and I'm leaving prayer time, my intimacy with God. I'm leaving that on the back burner. So, it's highly important. Probably one of the most important things, it's, it's the most important things we'll ever do is staying close to God, staying in prayer. Here's some verses. Ephesians 6, 18. Ephesians 6, 18. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. James 5, 16. The earnest Prayer of a righteous man has great power and produces wonderful results. 
You have First Thessalonians five seventeen. Never stop praying. All right. And another way to say that James five sixteen is that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So your 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 righteousness means you're in right standing with God. He said the effectual, fervent prayer. So you if you're praying a lot, you, it, it availeth much. Things start to happen. You're powerful. Things happen in the spirit because God's listening to you. All right. And when you're close to him, God's going to be close to you. If my people and I'll put the verse on the screen, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. All right, so if you're stuck in, in sin or you're doing anything and you, you know you're saved, turn back to God. Go back. He said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, say, God, I messed up. Forgive me. I'm coming back to you. Whatever you did, he can forgive you whatever you did. All right, I'm coming back to you. And he says, next thing to do is to pray. Prayer is highly important. Prayer and what is prayer? He's like, what is prayer? Prayer is conversations with God, your intimacy with God. You're talking to God. You're praying to Him. God is your business partner. God is your your counselor. All right, God, uh, God is, uh, is is your brother. God's gonna give you advice. But you, you know, you talk to Him and 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 speak in a manner which He's gonna return it back to you. He's gonna say something back to you. Listen to Him. And prayer is also worshiping. All right, you get down there, you, you, you're putting on worship tapes, you're hearing the word of God. All right, and prayer is even a form of Bible study is prayer as well. But you're talking to God. All right, you're telling God about your day. You're telling God about your life. You're telling God what you want to happen. You're even praying for other people. So it, be close to God. All right, a lot, of, a lot of Christians, they fail, they, are, they fall into sin because they have a very weak prayer life that keeps you built up all right keeps you going it keeps you energizing it keeps that that fire that fire in you all right it keeps that fire going in you all right so because the world is tough especially when you're in the world you're working you have a busy life you can choke that word out you can choke that power you can choke that intimacy that you have with god out but you don't want to do that you want to get close to him and remain close to god and create a discipline where you're praying all the time so if you're praying all the time, you're prayed up, you're ready to go, and you're, and you're ready for when the enemy attacks you, you've got that shield of faith, you're ready to speak to any attack and command it to leave, you're ready for, to pray for other people, miracles uh, will follow you, all right? And you'll be able to cast out demonic forces, or you'll be able to heal the sick. Jesus said this. He said, uh, what's the verse I'm looking for? It's one of the last things he said. Uh, if you believe in me, you'll cast out devils, you'll speak with new tongues, you take up serpents. If anything poisonous bites you, it won't harm you. You will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But you got to be praying. Jesus prayed a lot. He prayed a lot. And he, was, and he was ready for the day. Or ready for the month. Or ready for the year. So make prayer a major part of your life. More verses. Matthew 6, 5 through 8. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues. And the synagogues is like a church uh, 2,000 years ago, 2,000 some odd years ago. And at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you that they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So when you pray, be genuine in your prayer. Guys, so if you're in church and you're praying, you don't got to do all the extra stuff. All right, be concise, be genuine, make your, your prayers heartfelt, because God knows what you're going to pray about before you pray about it. But he just wants you on your knees praying to him. He wants that intimacy. He wants you asking him. You know, we have not because we ask not. You know, we're not in prayer. All right. Praying for somebody in public. Be be concise. All right. Uh, 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 let the Holy Spirit guide you. 
when you're praying for people. Don't just be praying for people and, and wanting to look all good and just saying all these extra words and worry about No, you know, if somebody comes to you for prayer, you know, ask the Holy Spirit, hey, Holy Spirit, let me know what to pray for them. And once you feel it, you just start praying for them, okay? All right, you don't have to be all thee and thou and all this extra stuff. No. Make it heartfelt. Make it genuine. All right? And that's what God, God wants a genuine prayer. He doesn't want a prayer with all these accolades and all this extra stuff. All right? If you're going to pray long, make sure it's a genuine long prayer. But don't pray long just to think, oh, I'm praying a long time. God's going to really hear me. No, God hears you in the short prayers too. All right, he, uh, Hebrews 4, 16. So Hebrews chapter 4, 16. Let us then in confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in, to help in time of need. That's big. That's more for the last one to stand concentrated. But let, Hebrews 4, 16, write it down. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You need help in time of need? It says, let us then with confidence draw near to God, near to the throne of grace. So if you're in time of need, even we try to do it before time of need, draw near him, stay close to the fire. So you have that grace and mercy in time of need when you're going through things in your life. You have financial issues, you have health issues, you have people issues. It's, it's, it's really good and helpful to be near that throne, to be near the throne of grace, all right, near the throne of mercy, all right, so God can save you, all right, it's, 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 it's good to be near that. I remember one time, a long time ago, um, I was at work and I did something, I don't know exactly, I don't remember, something that I wasn't supposed to be doing, all right, I did something and, and, and the company didn't like that and I was in trouble, all right, I don't know if I was going to be fired, but I was, I was in, in some trouble. I forgot exactly what I did. I didn't send something in or something on time. I was young. And I prayed about it. You know, I prayed. And, you know, at that time, I was really close to God. I'm, I'm still close to God now, but I was really, I was a new Christian. I was close to him. And I was excited about Christianity. And I was praying about, I was like, God, I did this at my job. Uh, uh, I would ask you to, to have mercy on me, to, to help me so I don't get in trouble. And then uh, after I prayed, I had a vision of these agents that came in a room. These Asians were looking at me and they were like, almost like the men in black. And they were looking at me and, they, they, and I was working on something and they looked at it and it looked like a mess. And they just took, they took a towel away from me. It wasn't very friendly, but they wasn't evil. Kind of, I don't know, I, don't, I wouldn't say in the middle maybe. I was something, they just took it from me and they started cleaning up my mess in the, in the dream. They were cleaning up my mess and I got the memo, I got the message. And in the next couple of days, uh, I'll make a long story short, I didn't get into much trouble and I had like another chance at the job. Uh, at, I don't know if it was a situation where I was getting fired or not, but I had another chance. I, I didn't get in that much trouble. So that's the, the main part. But the, 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 the whole point is God answers your prayer. He has that grace and mercy in the time of need. So, but you got to stay close. So you have that, that throne of grace. It's going to be hard to just when you're getting in trouble or something's going on and you never talk to God, you're saved, but you never talk to him. It's hard to get that throne of grace. I'm not saying you can't get it if you're in an emergency. You know, you, you, God, God knows what's going on at all times. But it's better to be close to God and be in an emergency than be in an emergency and be far from God. So keep that in mind. All right. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, uh, in Christ Jesus for you. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made, uh, be made known to God. And the peace of God, which, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. So in this one, this particular one, I want to say, Christ is saying, I mean, the word is saying, be anxious for nothing. So don't be worried about anything. 
But in what? In prayer and supplication, with petition, with thanksgiving, make your petitions known to God. So with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your petitions known to him. Don't be anxious. Don't be afraid. Don't be worried about things. Just get on your knees. Pray and, and thank God for, for, for seeing a breakthrough, even if you don't see it yet. But he said pray with supplication in thanksgiving. So a prayer and praying is highly important and, it ha and hopefully the Holy Spirit is convicting you if you haven't been doing it a lot. Maybe that's why things are not going the way that you kind of want in your life or, or there may be ups and downs and things are just not as stable. Maybe you have a weak prayer life and you need to pray more often. Or if you pray often, you may need to pray just maybe a little bit longer. All right. A lot of times we, you know, some of these Christians, they're still saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Well, you need to just be just praying to God. Hey, Father God, thank you. Blessed be your name. Father God, I just want to thank you for waking me up this morning. And just tell him about your day. Tell him about what's going on. Ask him, Father, what do you want me to do for your kingdom? You, you need to start praying a more in a more mature manner. All right. And more consistently. And again, make it your daily uh, discipline. And sometimes it's hard. Sometimes I'm not going to sit up here like, hey, I'm praying every day. Sometimes I'm really tired and I just go to bed. But I know even if I'm tired, I, I probably need to get my butt up and go pray. Because the devil doesn't take days off. Or he doesn't take days off. He's tired. His, his demonic forces are still working through the night. And it's best that, we, that we're praying. All right. Number two is have a consistent Bible study. And I want to go over a couple of verses here and move forward. Uh, Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and it and judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So the word of God is very powerful. It's tremendously powerful. All right, so the devil's not scared of what you say, but he's scared of God's word. All right, so when you pray, another way to pray is, you know, pray with God's word. All right, tell God what his word is. God, you said, pray. You said, God, if you have any financial issues, you say, pray like this. Father God, I'm having financial issues. You know, you said that you will satisfy all my needs according to your riches and glory. So I just pray, Father God, that, that uh, I have more finances or I have more money come in. You said that you own a cattle on a thousand hills. So, Father God, I'm just praying for uh, better finances this year. So what you're doing is you are incorporating God's word, what he said, because God said he's not a man that he shall lie. And all his words, or all his promises are yes and amen. You, you're bringing back God's word. Basically, hey, God, you said this and I'm thanking you for this. You're putting that together in prayer. And that's a powerful prayer. That's a powerful prayer. All right. Because you're, you're holding God to his word and God's not a man. He, he shall lie. And a lot of people are, are sick and, and all this because they have all these issues because they really don't know God's word. They don't even use God's word. They don't even know it enough about God's word. They don't even get in the Bible or they don't know God's word. So how can you have faith in something if you don't know God's word? You don't even know that. A lot of people don't even know it's God's will to heal them. But how can they know that if they don't know God's word? So it's very important to know and understand God's word because it's very powerful. All right. It, 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 it reaches is powerful in this world It's powerful in a different dominion. All right. Our, 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 yeah, our different dimension. So his words is, is, is powerful. And if you have them in your mouth and you have them in your mind, if you have them in your heart, it makes that much more stronger. All right. So second Timothy two fifteen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly handles the word of truth. Joshua 1 8, I'm going to move along here. Keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it and, uh, day and night, so that you may be careful to do what is everything that is written in it. Then you will uh, be then you will be prosperous and successful. So do everything that's in this book then you will be prosperous and successful. And this is one that I use all the time. He says, my son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them 
and health to all their flesh. Keep thy word, keep thy word with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You hear what he's saying, he said, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. You have any type of illness or anything, God's words, it says it right there, his words are health to all your flesh. So find some healing scriptures and say those all out loud every day as medicine because he says words is health to your flesh. You got to take God's word on it. All right? A lot of you guys don't even believe in his word. God's not a man that he show lie. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't have human beings write this for any reason. Take his word. His words are health to your flesh. Health to your flesh. Pray. Father God, according to 1 Peter 2, 24, Jesus Christ took away my infirmities. He bore my sicknesses on the cross. And by his stripes, I'm healed and made whole, Father God. And I just want to thank you. According to Galatians 3, 13, Jesus Christ redeemed me from the curse of the law, being made a curse for me for curses everyone that hanging on a tree. So I no longer have, and just put what you got or what's going on in your life. I no longer have this type of sickness, but I have the blessings of Abraham. And I just want to thank you because you're mixing God's words and your prayers. So it's highly important to know the word of God. And this is for everything. It's not, I know I'm talking a lot about healing, but this is finances. This is oppressions. This is work. This is business. This is everything. Find words that covers your case or covers your situation and use them. Also know that it's not a formula. It's not, I'm going to just find words, I'm going to say them. No, it's all about your intimacy with God, your relationship with God. You know, God is not going to be mocked here. You just find the words and just saying them and think they're just going to work and you have no relationship with him. Deep calls upon deep. You have to go deeper than that. All right, so number three is to live a consecrated life. Now, what does living a consecrated life mean? It means you're living a sanctified life and a separate life. You're not living like the world you're living like a follower of Christ Jesus all right you're separating yourself you're here you know you're tangible we're here but we know our home is in heaven we're not necessarily acting like the world even though at times we act like the world you, you kind of get what I'm saying like it's hard to live in a world where you're just not kind of act I mean we we run we play sports like the world but we're not we're not acting or adhering to the world systems and cultures. We have a new culture, and our culture is in Christ Jesus. All right, so, you know, God said, be holy for he is holy. So he, he expects his children to be holy and to be separate. And as you grow, and I've said this many times, as you grow, you, you will not be sinless. But as you grow and mature, you do need to sin less. Okay? So you'll never be sinless. You'll mess, you'll mess up. You'll make mistakes. You know, you'll walk, you'll walk in the spirit one day, and then one, the next day you're walking in the flesh. So you won't be sinless. But as you get older, as you mature uh, more, you do need to sin less. Okay? <clears throat> Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. I appeal, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. All right. So. God wants you to renew your mind because it all everything starts in your mind. All right. Your body will not do something without your mind knowing about it first. All right. And God wants you to change your mind. All right. He wants you to, to change, change how you move in this world. All right. Change how you think. You have an old man. He wants you to put that old man away and put on a new man. All right. You've been thinking this way for so long, but now... Now that you have Christ, now you've been bathed in the blood of Jesus, I want you to think this way. I want you to create something new. All right? I want you to go forward in a new path. You've been going on this path, and however bad this path was, you've been completely forgiven. So now I want you to act like you're forgiven. I don't want you to always pick up old things. If old things have been pornography, you don't need to pick that up anymore. 
then sometimes you might go back to dead things and it might sting a little bit, but now you're on a new path. Ask for, forg ask for forgiveness if you mess up, but try to walk that road. Don't do this. You know, a lot of Christians, they doing this, going back to dead things, going back to dead things. And a lot of times when they're doing that, you know, that hot and cold, hot and cold and lukewarm in the middle, God will spit you out. Things will start to get worse. So once you start walking that, that right path, now, you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness. Now you're, you've been translated to, to God's dear son, Jesus Christ. Walk that road. I'm not saying you won't do this every once in a while. Or do that. So, but you're primarily walking that road. And you st you're staying on that path. You're staying concentrated. And some ways to stay concentrated is to walk in holiness. God said again, God said, be holy for I am holy. All right, that's... That's walking in righteousness, salvation. You're going. To, you're going to church. Uh, you're treating people right. All right. You, 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 you're, you're praying. All right. You're acting like a Christian. When someone sees you, they know, or they know something. Even if you're not even, you're not praying or anything. Like that, they say, hey, something good about this guy. This is a good person here. I can trust this person. All right. Uh, you, and you have people that want to come to you and ask you for advice and all that. You're, you're representing the kingdom of God. All right? You're representing the kingdom of God. You're not treating people bad. All right? No matter where they come from, who they are, you know you have in God, so you treat them like that. You treat them with love. And the Bible says love your neighbor. And that's in all aspects of it. Number two, taking up, taking up your cross every day. This goes corresponds to Luke 9, 23. And he said to all, and this is Jesus talking, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what, for what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul or forfeits himself? Take up your cross daily. If you, die, if you you decide to follow Jesus, take up your cross. All right. Don't just be following Jesus and then I'm gonna go back and do other things. I'm, I want to do this in the world. No, follow Jesus. Do what He asks you to do. Pray to God, asking what is your purpose in the kingdom of God, and follow Jesus. Take up your cross daily. Live like. A Christian all right live like a Christian and, and again he's and he mentioned but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it so you may have had different plans in your life you may like I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that but once you accept Jesus Christ in your life why don't you just say you know God what do you want me to do what do you want me to do for you? Because when you put whatever you want to do, your selfish ambition or whatever you want to do in your life, when you put that away for God, it's weird because strangely, you'll find what your purpose is, what you love, because he'll take you down a path of where you're supposed to be. Because this way, you want to do these things here, it may have taken you longer to even get there. What God's way is, you're doing things for God and God, God's guiding you. He knows your talents. He knows what you want. He knows your heart's desire. And he may take you a different way, but maybe a shortcut where you're doing what you love, but you're doing it for God as well. You never know. All right. God works in mysterious and strange ways that we can't really comprehend. He's playing, playing ninefold chess up there, guys. So sometimes you got to lose your life to find it. Not sometimes. Lose your life in Christ to find it all the time. All right. Try him. All right, Matthew 5, 13. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, number three, uh, for living sancti sanctified or being consecrated is not going where evil uh, will be present. Avoid evil. All right, avoid evil. This is a big thing. Avoid evil, and I can say it on Psalms 1, because you, and we're talking here in about a, sec a second. Let me, let me read Psalms 1. And avoiding evil because this is going to be prior to the single 
hardest thing that you have to do in your Christian life, all right, to stay consistent. So let me read Psalms 1. All right, so it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth its fruit in, it, in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are, are like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Boom. And I can read one this first part. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the paths of sinners. Avoid evil. Avoid going places that are evil. You know, clubs. If it's if it's if it's, um, if it's making you sin or bringing you to sin, and you have a lust issues and temptations. Avoid going there. If you're watching certain things on TV that you know you're not supposed to be watching, pornography and all this. Avoid doing that. You have certain friends that that are, that are not doing anything in their life. That they're, 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 they're sinning and all that. You're a new Christian or you've been a Christian for a while, and you know these people are not good for you. Avoid doing that. All right, you're living a consecrated life. You're you're different. You're staying sanctified because don't don't get it twisted and don't be deceived and don't be naive. All right, if you're hanging out with people that they're not doing right, that can take something from you. That that influence there. What I mean, that influence can be strong, and you may find yourself acting like them and not even knowing it. All right, influence is strong. I don't care what any level it is, it's strong. So be wary and be careful who you hang out with. All right. Because influence is strong, it, it it may happen to the devil. He'll 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 try to take you, but he won't just take you really quick. He'll take you in a small segment. Oh, okay, hey, see that picture right there on Instagram? Oh, she look good. Okay, all right, all right. Hey, you just watch that picture. You know you want more now. Let's come on. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, let's go watch this video. Boom. And then push you more with with, with pornography. Oh, you see your friend over there? Hey, you know what? You ain't got many friends right now. Man, just go hang out with him. You know. You know he. He's okay, you know. He's okay some days, and then you start hanging out with him or her more, okay? And they start pulling you away from the kingdom of God, and you're not going to church anymore, and and, and you're not reading your Bible anymore. Uh, you're going places with your friends, you're in strip clubs, all stuff like that. All right. So avoid evil. You probably won't be perfect, but I'm trying to tell you to live that sanctified life, to stay close to God, to be pure. All right. Uh, and, and I'm not saying you'll be perfect, all right? We're saved by the blood of Jesus. We just go, we go back for forgiveness, uh, and he'll, he'll forgive our sins, and he'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's now, there's now therefore, no condemnation who's in Christ Jesus, okay? But you don't, and that doesn't give you a license to go sin, all right? You're trying to avoid, you're trying to stay consecrated, you're trying to stay close to God, all right? And I'm going to end it with Matthew 5, 13. And I want you to remember this, guys. This is, for, this is for us. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his, his savior, wherewith shall it be salted, it is then thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Now let me say this more in a different MSG version of the same verse, Matthew 5.13. Now listen carefully. Let me tell you why you are here. You are here to be the salt season that brings out the God, the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. You have a major responsibility on this earth. You are in the family of God. You are to be the salt of the world. If you lose your godliness, 
if you, you, you lose that savior taste, what use will you be? You're, you're not helping people come to, you're not helping people come to, to know in Christ. You're not being kind to pe kind to people and people come to you, why are you so kind? Well, you got, you always have a bright spirit about you and you can just start talking about God to, go, to, to glory be the God. You're not helping people. You're not praying for people. How are you going to be able to help people? When people see you, they see hope. They see Father God, they see the Holy Spirit, they see Jesus Christ when they see you. Some people just need a, a shoulder to lean on or, or someone to cry to, someone to pray for them. If you're not, if you're not staying prayed up, if you, if you lost your salt, what good are you to them? So you're here to represent the kingdom of God. All right. So let's go ahead and do a recap. So number one this is how to stay closer to God. Have a consistent prayer life. You know, pray all the time. Stay close to him, guys. And number two, uh, make sure you're in your Bible. Make sure you have a consistent Bible study. Study to show yourself approved. Remember that the word of God is powerful, guys. It's best to use that when you pray. Use that when things are, are, are happening in your life. If you have, you have issues, make sure you go back to the word of God. So make sure that you're prayed up and you know the word of God. And number three, guys, make sure you live a consecrated life. Live a sanctified life, guys, uh, a, a life where you're following Jesus Christ and you're forsaking the things of the world. Now, I'm not saying you can't have fun. And again, I'm not saying that you need to become some type of monk or anything like that. No, I'm not saying that you you got to live on a mountain. No, no, you can have fun. God wants people to have fun. But there's a lot of evil and a lot of evil systems in this world that Christians don't need to be going towards. We don't, need, we don't need to be doing. So find out what's evil, guys. Because sometimes it's hard to tell. But after you after you pray, after you read through God's word, then you'll be able to understand and know what's evil and what's not, or what's authentic and what's not, all right? So make sure you stay close to God, and he'll show you. He'll show you, and you'll just know that, hey, this is not right. I need to stay away from this. I need to stay consecrated. I need to stay on this path. Of, of staying close to God and if you do that guys if you stay close to God all right if you pray often if you're in God's Word reading the Bible and if you have a consecrated life then you'll see the miraculous everywhere you go all right you will have the energy you will have uh, you have the patience to deal with people guys uh, or you have you have the power that you need when you need to pray for somebody when you need to pray for yourself when you need to pray for finances all right even when you need to pray for for healing or our demonic issues and all that all right you'll you'll have that power behind you because you're close to god god said deep calls upon deep and a lot of you christians are not hearing from god and maybe going through certain things in your life where you have no answers to probably the problem is you're not close to god you're like somewhere out here when you probably should be here and that's through prayer, prayer as much as you can, pray to God. That's through knowing his word and reading his word. And that's through having a, a sanctified, consecrated life. All right, where you're on a pathway, your, your mind is renewed. All right, and you're living for Christ and it shows. That's when you can hear from God. Now, I know as many times from time to time, if, even if you're not hearing from God, even if you're way out here, God will drop a memo down in your spirit. A lot of times we do that to protect you and, and to get you moving and get you back in the house of God. But that's all I have for today, guys. If you have any questions, please leave all your questions down below. You guys have a good day and stay blessed.